Everyone, thanks for coming today. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. Um, I don't know if Coach Bruce really wants me to say this, but she does prefer Jennifer, okay? Not Jen or Jenny or whatever other name. So when you, media especially, when you talk to her, call her Jennifer. Um, the other thing, people up here, please be cognizant of the cameras behind you. Try not to move, uh, get in the way. Uh, the order of appearance for today, what we'll go through, uh, Greg Christopher will speak, followed by Leslie uh, Irvine, and then Jennifer Roos. And uh, after Jennifer is done, we will open it up to questions from the media only. And then uh, once we're done with that, uh, everyone will be available for one-on-ones. Players that are here will also be available for one-on-ones. Uh, Danielle Havel and Chrissy Steffen, who are coming in a little bit late, uh, they were kind of involved with the process, uh, the search process. So if you want to speak with them, members of the media, they, uh, they have a pretty good insight. Uh, that's all I've got. At this point, we'll open it up to Greg. Thanks, Jason. Uh, good, good morning, I guess, still, uh, for everybody. This is uh, an exciting day for BGSU women's basketball. There's, uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, thank you all for joining us uh, to, to introduce Jennifer Roos. Uh, that sounds kind of funny to say that we're going to introduce somebody who's been with us for 11 years. But uh, before I talk about Jennifer, a couple of notes on the process. We started uh, just shy of three weeks ago uh, on the process, the search process. As I stated, when we started all of this, this program is too important to the university, it's too important to the uh, department, uh, too important to the team uh, to shortchange the process. So uh, the, the national search went, uh, frankly, just as I expected. Uh, we took our, uh, our list of priorities that we always work from uh, in a search process. Uh, we took the candidates that we had in mind, uh, that we, uh, we started with, that you always start with in your back pocket, so to speak. Uh, and then we went out and talked to the leaders uh, in, in women's basketball across the country. Uh, the coaches, uh, administrators, conference commissioners, uh, people in women's basketball, and ultimately spoke with, uh, with a lot of different people. Uh, at the end of the day, we did a dozen interviews uh, and then cut that to the three finalists that we brought to, to campus to meet with, uh, with several people. Uh, going in, we knew that Jennifer, and, and we knew Jennifer, and we knew how important she was. But this process really gave her a platform to stand on her own to show what she would do as far as leading the program forward uh, to the next level. Uh, others in basketball also weighed in through the process. Uh, you've got people like Doug Bruno and Tara uh, Vanderbeer that, that speak highly of Jennifer and advocate for her. Uh, that registered loud and clear. Uh, it goes without saying that women's basketball is very important here at BGSU. We sometimes get fixated in some ways on the recent success that we've had, and you, you stop and, and realize that this program has a rich tradition uh, that goes back really three decades. Uh, and that tradition helped forge uh, the community support that we've got here today and was demonstrated. And that support, in turn, also helped attract a, a fantastic group of student athletes. We do have a great team, uh, there's no doubt about that, a terrific group of young women, in addition to great basketball players. Although it was funny last night to try to, to watch them try to talk Jennifer out of the workout this morning on her, on her first day of the, uh, on the job. Uh, but in the end, here's what, here's what stood out about Jennifer. Uh, the bar is set high for this program. The expectations are set very high, and she's going to maintain that. No momentum is going to be lost, and we can move forward and chase even more championships. She is absolutely ready. Uh, 11 years here, eight championships. And as anyone who knows Jennifer, the attention to detail, the planning, the preparation, the recruiting relationships, she is not going to miss a beat. This program is not going to miss a beat. And then there's finally something that you really couldn't measure through all of this. Uh, it came out loud and clear as we talked with her. And that is the passion, the dedication that she has to this program, the connection. Uh, and again, that's something you can't necessarily measure. But uh, as we spoke to everybody, that came out loud and clear. So as I wrap this up, uh, congratulations to you again, Jennifer. Uh, you earned this. You earned it through the process. Uh, I want to thank the team for their maturity and how they handled the last couple of weeks. I know it's been challenging. I also want to thank the staff, many of them over here, uh, that helped. This was very much a team effort. We also included some people that were close to the program and certainly thank them for their insight. Uh, the person that worked uh, most closely uh, beside me in this was Leslie Irvine, our Associate AD. Thank you uh, for your leadership through this and 
I'll turn it over to Leslie for the introduction of John. Good morning, everybody, and uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Uh, we are truly thrilled that uh, Jennifer has accepted the position as our head women's basketball coach. As we work through the process during the last few weeks, I've been fortunate to have the opportunity to listen to Jennifer's vision for the program, her understanding of what it takes to succeed, and above all, her commitment to the institution, its women's basketball team, and the student athletes in this room today. As I pause and think about the choice we made, I can't help but think about Jennifer and the role she has played in building a remarkable women's basketball program here at Bowling Green. She has been mentored by one of the best and has shown she is ready to be our next head coach. Having also been through a national search, it was evident that we had a rising star right here in our family. Jennifer stood out throughout this process and we are fortunate to have her lead our program. She is highly respected by her peers in the coaching world and it's both volumes. A story that struck me through the search involved Jennifer's interview with two of our current players. Jennifer's interview schedule was identical to outside candidates, so she was asked to meet with the captains as part of the process. I moderated this meeting. Jennifer did an excellent job, and her connection to the student athletes was evident. However, the inside story was at the end of the meeting, Jennifer leant over to the players and asked them why they hadn't dressed more appropriately for an interview. They were wearing sweats. It was a moment that hit me, demonstrating that no matter what the stage or what the event, Jennifer is this team's coach, and her commitment to teaching them life lessons and guiding them in the right direction is paramount. It also gave us a glimpse into her non-negotiables, so team take note. Jennifer truly is the right choice to continue the tradition of winning, community involvement, and success on and off the court here at BGSU Women's Basketball. I'd like to congratulate Jennifer and wish her the best of luck as she embarks on this next chapter of her career. We'd now like to invite Jennifer up to the podium for her remarks. Thank you, everyone. And again, thank you for being here. I'm so proud to stand before you as your new women's basketball head coach. Before I begin, I want to extend several thank yous to those who helped make this day a reality and to those who have supported me along the way. The Bowling Green State University trustees, President Maisie, Greg Christopher and Leslie Irvine, and a handful of others on the search committee who are here today, as well as other athletic staff members. I met at length with them with various times uh, throughout the hiring process, uh, having an established relationship with them already really made this process an extremely enjoyable one. And to the team members who are here today, um, we met last, late last night and I shared with them my excitement uh, and how much I'm looking forward to working with them. Also to the alumni and all the donors, your support has been unwavering and I greatly appreciate it. All the messages I've received have literally been o overwhelming and I thank you. Some additional donors I'd like to recognize are our Champion Circle members as well as other significant donors. Steve and Rhonda Melkai, Dennis Vera, Lee and Marge Reserve, Van and Tracy Wright, Alan and Carol Schmidhorse, Larry and Tricia Miles, and Kerm and Mary Ellen Stroh. And last but not least, Diane Timiak. Diane, your contribution to the women's basketball program is a true testament of what one person can do to shape the lives of so many. I'd be remiss if I did not recognize the coaches before me at BGSU, all of whom have helped pave the way for me and shape this program into what it is today. Nora Liu, Sue Hager, my neighbor, I don't know if she's here today, Fran Bull, Jackie Clark, Dee Canablo, and my personal favorites, Kurt Miller, Brandy Poole, Kevin Eckert, Monique Rosati. At times, we put the word fun and dysfunction. <laughs> I know they are watching today, and I want to say I love you all very much. To all my coaches whom I played for years and years ago, and years ago, each of you have played a large role in my life by shaping my beliefs and giving me countless words of wisdom that I use today and I live by. Thank you, Val Bertries, Betsy Pryor, Dan Kessler, and John Fowler. Lastly, my parents were unable to attend today, so 
my close friends and teammates from years gone by, thank goodness you all love basketball because it was a long road to hoe if you did it. So either you fake it well or you really, really do love it. So you've been so supportive, win, win or lose, over the years. And as you know, I've been at BGSU for the past 11 years as an assistant and associate head coach. That time is a drop in the bucket when you're talking about the long-standing tradition at BGSU. During that time, our staff was able to add to that tradition by hanging eight consecutive MAC championship banners and earning eight national postseason appearances. More importantly to me, every student athlete who completed their four-year eligibility earned their degree. Some of them were first-generation students, and several of them went on to attain higher degrees. Those accomplishments are more important to me than those banging banners hanging in their rafters currently in the Stroh Center. As my history professors would remind me growing up that similar circumstances do produce similar results. The Bowling Green State University Women's Program has a rich tradition, a history of excellence, and I intend to continue to build upon that with the support of the community, alumni, administration, by continuing to recruit quality student athletes, by recruiting to a system that's currently in place, and by putting people in position to be successful. This university and program are one of a kind. With nationally ranked academic programs and acclaimed faculty, BGSU will continue to attract the best of the best. My passion and loyalty for BGSU is undeniable. I believe in this team, I believe in this room, and everybody else who is associated with this program. Even though this press conference is intended to be about me today, when you take a step back, it's not about me, it's about you. It's about the BGSU family. It's about celebrating a program rich in basketball history. And it's about generating excitement while reaffirming our commitment to future success. Leading this team, I will continue the relentless pursuit of excellence and surround myself with others who share that same passion and vision. As I said earlier, I'm very proud to be the next women's basketball head coach at Bowling Green State University, and very proud to be wearing orange and brown. Roll along. We will open it up to media. We've got this big microphone thing right here, which should pick up your voice. So if you've got questions for Coach Roos, uh, please uh, feel free to ask them. We will do uh, any questions with others like Greg or Leslie <coughs> afterwards. But if you've got questions for Coach Roos, please feel free. Jennifer, you could just talk about the emotions. What were they like when they offered you to go as head coach? It was an exciting time. So Greg called me late last night. Uh, I was in the process of getting ready to eat dinner, so uh, it, it still was on the stove, <laughs> un uneaten. So I came over last night, and we we had a heart to heart in his office. He leaned forward over his desk, and I leaned forward in over his desk as well, and we we shared some few words and realized that each to each other that we were both ready. He was ready for me to assume this position, and I was ready to take over this position for Coach Miller. What was it like inside? You know, when you heard that off, so. Butterflies, <laughs> excitement. Uh, I don't want to sound too much like team, excuse me, Tim Tebow and say excitement about 45 times, but uh, it was a true uh, gut feeling. Uh, I tell our kids at times, you know, follow your heart more so than your head at times, and with this whole process, I followed my heart. Jennifer, have you talked to Kurt, and if you have, what was his message to you? You know I talk to Kurt. He, I talk to him every day for the past 11 years. So uh, the only time I didn't talk to him is when uh, we were headed to Central Michigan when he was at home and he wanted to be, wanted me to be on my own uh, for the Central Michigan game. So, but yes, I have talked with him at, at length. Uh, he has given me more congratulations than, than I deserve. Uh, but he is way, way too busy at where, where he is to be extended all of his congratulations, but he did wish me well and wished everybody else well. Coach Ruth, what was the team's reaction like last night? Well, Simone, <laughs> the team's reaction was exactly what I thought it was, would be. They, they were ecstatic. Uh, several of them jumped up and down, and we ended with a group hug. Coach, during the interview process, as you tried to sell yourself, how did you do that, and was it awkward with people that you've been around for? So, wow. 
I don't think awkward is, is the right adjective at all. When, when you're so familiar with someone and you're so familiar with the group after 11 years, uh, not only have you developed uh, professional relationships, but you've developed personal relationships. And this, from the beginning, uh, Greg and I were on the same page in regards to the hiring process. And we knew that this would be a process indeed. And that he stuck to his guns and it, it is what it is. Uh, and that's why I'm here, here today. Uh, in, in front of you, but uh, awkward, definitely not. Uh, I was encouraged by all the candidates that he spoke to. It, it was a sure sign to me how serious he was about finding the, the best candidate for this position. Filling in for Coach Miller last year, how much did that help you to be better prepared for this day? As I told a, a couple people after the, that nine day interlude, as I call it, where uh, I went 2 0 and help Coach Miller secure the MAC championship or MAC Coach of the Year uh, award for himself, <laughs> as, as I tell him all the time. So I know he's watching, so I had to throw that in. Uh, no, it was uh, it was an exciting time, but honestly, we, we stuck uh, to the norm. It, it was business as usual, uh, just like. Um, after Coach Miller decided to leave for Indiana, it was business as usual. Uh, we, our team is very disciplined, and I provided a structure for them that was very similar to what they have known over the years during that nine-day window and currently since our, our last game here in the postseason tournament. And they, they believed in that, and I believed in that as, as well, and we haven't deviated from the course at all. Is it going to be business as usual heading forward, or are we going to see a definite Jennifer Ruth stamp on the plane? I, I hope it's business as usual, and I will be adding my own, own stamp. But uh, Coach Miller and the previous coaches, as I mentioned, have, have set uh, the bar very high, as Greg said, in regards to what the expectations are for, for this program. So everyone in our locker room knows that, everybody in the community knows that, and it, it is definitely going to take a village to continue to meet those expectations year in and year out. What, what might we see as a signature of your own? I promise you I won't throw my suit jacket like he did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, my, my signature, uh, I have been mentored by two different styles growing up. I was eight years at, at Davidson College under my college coach who hired me uh, when I was young and dumb right after, three months after graduation. And then I was mentored by Kurt Miller for 11 years uh, here at, at Bowling Green. Both coaches earned a tremendous amount of respect from their players. And bottom line, that is what I look to achieve as well uh, through my own methodology in, in creating that same sort of respect level from the kids. How soon do you want to finalize your staff? Do you have some names already in mind? That is the question of the day, Howard. Uh, but considering I was just hired about 18 hours ago, uh, I do have some ideas in mind. But uh, I call me old school, but I want to get in touch uh, with the head coaches of other candidates that I have in, in my mind before talking to them, uh, because I think that's a professional courtesy that needs to happen, honestly, more so in our game. So I'll be extending um, some phone calls to head coaches to ask about other, other assistants. Talk about how Greg and Leslie approached this whole process. Um, did it take you, how hard was it for you to appreciate that process? Uh, because there were some people who might have thought this should have happened immediately. Well, I, like I said earlier, I don't think it was an awkward or any way hard to appreciate the process because the process is what hired Danielle, the volleyball coach. It's the process that hired other uh, head coaches in the athletic department. It's a process that President Maisie has put her stamp on for the university. So this is not a, a one-time thing. This is a process that the university believes in and, and as well as Greg and President Maisie. Will you be moving into the big office soon, or are you going to stay in the office? <laughs> Considering I had to clean up the big office after Coach Miller left, uh, I will uh, I will be moving in probably at a, at a later date. My, my current uh, goals, or my immediate goals, uh, I leave on Thursday to go recruiting, uh, and I will more than likely be back on uh, Wednesday. So moving is not on the itinerary. <laughs> With that, are we all done? Okay, we will uh, thank you all for coming. We'll close it out. And uh, uh, Greg and Leslie and, and Jet, Coach Roos and the players are available for uh, questions.